What's up today? I want to jump into an article that came out in Air Force Times on September 14th, written by Rachel Cohen. That is linked down below. And we're talking about counterfeit components inside ejection seats. Lieutenant David Smith was killed in June of 2020 in an F-16 mishap at Shaw Air Force Base when his ejection seat failed to work properly. His digital recovery sequencer, the DRS, which we'll talk a lot about in this episode. His wife, his widow, has filed suit against three defense contractors regarding this. This report goes through several components, including which an Air Force Research Laboratory briefing dated in August of 2020, where they suspect there are multiple counterfeit components of this digital recovery sequencer. There are a few other claims in there. I will say up front, I'm gonna make the assumption that no one is doing this in malice because I think in this case, it's absolutely criminal. I'm gonna make some assumptions that when they're testing these chips and a chip doesn't make it to the research laboratory or it has been removed, there is possibly some issues with chain of custody and how these things move from the safety investigation board to the expert in this case, which is Teledyne, the manufacturer of the digital recovery sequencer, and then to the accident investigation board and to the Air Force Research Laboratory. So I'm gonna assume there's some chain of custody issues. I'm imagining that Teledyne is trying to troubleshoot and figure out what part of that DRS malfunction, and in doing so, they're doing some destructive things to it changing out chips, seeing if things are moving and firing electrons the way they should. And that's just me making that assumption. Bottom line is these ejection seats, this is your last line of defense and they have to work. The fact that there are counterfeit components or suspected counterfeit components is definitely a big Alpatine. red flag. Alpatine. Tower 26 is really see you, runway 4 left, wind 0, 4, 0 at 5, clear for takeoff. Seat's high, Altair is eyes, we're clear for takeoff, clear for the airspace. Fire protector. All right, I received a few messages about this article that came out in Air Force Times on September 14th. It was written by Rachel Cohen, entitled, An Air Force Pilot Died When His Ejection Seat Failed, Was It Counterfeit? So inside this article, which we're going to look at today, there are some claims that components of Mezzer's seat, Lieutenant David Smith's Mezzer, who died on June 30th, 2020, at Shaw Air Force Base when he ejected and his seat did not work. There are now claims that components of that seat were counterfeit, chips, et cetera, inside that, which, if is true, is not a good thing, to say the least. So let's jump into the article. An Air Force investigation of fatal fighter jet crash in June of 2020 quietly discovered that key components of the pilot's ejection seat may have been counterfeit, Air Force Times learned. First Lieutenant David Smith, an F-16 pilot at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina, died June 30th, 2020, when his ejection seat malfunctioned as he tried to escape from a failed nighttime landing. I did two episodes on this, episode 23 and episode 24. 23, we break down the accident investigation board report in detail, which goes into a lot more than that, just a little paragraph I read there, or sentence rather. And then episode 24, I talk with Bender, who is an F-16, who was an F-16 pilot at the time, now an F-35 pilot. And we kind of go through to get another perspective outside of just mine. To summarize, that accident investigation board report essentially found two faults. One being measure, because he did land short and damaged his landing gear. Two, supervisor of flying, who is another F-16 pilot in the tower, didn't call Lockheed Martin to discuss with the engineers what their recommendation was. The issue here is the digital recovery sequencer in the seat. This recovery sequencer was supposed to be replaced three years prior to this mishap. And in fact, Mezzer's flight was the last flight this jet was gonna fly before that was gonna be replaced. But that part had been extended, that maintenance had been extended for three years due to parts availability and then maintenance consolidation efforts right there at the end in, in May of 2020. We're gonna be talking about the digital recovery sequencer here in depth, and that's where one of the many problems lie. So an Air Force official inquiry in months following the accident found that electronics inside the seat were scratched, unevenly sanded, and showed otherwise shoddy craftsmanship. The Air Force official inquiry in the months following the accident found that the electronics inside the seat were scratched, unevenly sanded, and showed otherwise shoddy craftsmanship. I'm assuming this is either the Safety Investigation Board or the Accident Investigation Board. Not all this information was released, but the Accident Investigation Board is report is public and you can read it. And I have that linked in episode 23. 
So that raised flags at the Air Force Research Laboratory. So AFRL, that's the Air Force Research Laboratory, which we'll talk more about as well, which was called for a closer look to confirm whether the pieces were fraudulent, according to previously unreported slides provided by the Air Force Times. It's unclear whether the question was ever answered. While the Air Force suspected parts of the seat were counterfeit, it buried the information in a non-public section of the accident investigation report. The details came to light in a federal lawsuit filed by Messer's widow, Valerie. She's suing three defense companies for negligence and misleading the Air Force about the safety of their products. So in the case, Lockheed Martin Collins Aerospace, which builds the ACES-2 ejection seat, and Teledyne Technologies, which has multiple business units, and Teledyne makes the seat's digital sequencer. Jumping over to Teledyne's website, there's a couple recovery sequencers. The digital recovery sequencer that we're talking about that was faulty inside Messer's jet is also in the F-15, F-16, F-22, F-117, A-10, B-1B, and B-2 aircraft. Since 2005, over 7,500 units have been delivered to the United States Air Force as well as FMS users, that's foreign military sales users. So there's a lot of these digital recovery sequencers that are out there. So in Messer's case, again, when he ejected, the seat never deployed the parachute and ultimately he was killed upon impact. Again, as a fighter pilot, when all else fails, you're supposed to have the ejection seat and that should work. So according to the Air Force Research Laboratory slides dated 3 August 2020, however, the service suspected that several transistors, microchips inside the sequencer were fake. Valerie's legal team obtained the slides through the Freedom of Information Act. Six transistors had no conformal coating, were heavily gouged, had arcing scratch marks, were considered obsolete or suspected to be counterfeit. The lab also found signs that Teledyne had destroyed evidence related to the case. Teledyne appeared to have replaced five microchips on the sequencer before sending it to the lab. Teledyne had removed the printed wiring board from the DRS housing and had mounted the board to a test fixture, the lawsuit said. Teledyne had cut the leads on the channel number two parallel flash memory chip to facilitate the chip removal. Still, the lab said it wasn't sure whether any of those parts caused the ejection seat failure. AFRL says the parts are strictly considered suspect at the time. That's in 2020 when they wrote this. Destructive analysis of these components and analysis of components of other DRS boards would re be required to provide a higher level of confidence in whether or not they are counterfeit. So basically you'd have to go out there and destroy these boards inside ejection seats all across the Air Force inventory to even figure out if there's more counterfeit chips, et cetera. Counterfeiting has plagued the Pentagon supply chains for decades and, and contractors are often unaware they are providing faulty materials. The DOD is aware of the problem and is working to eliminate these components from supply chains, says AFRL. To a certain extent, I absolutely can believe that there might be an unintentional or non-malice use of counterfeit parts, especially when we're talking about supply chains. On slide one, I'm not sure who annotated on here who received this brief. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it. You can also click it down in the show notes, but slide one up in the top in 12 point font, obviously added after this slide said, who received this brief? That is a great question because depending on where this one stopped, uh, I would have a few questions that if we have counterfeit parts and bad ejection seats, it obviously stops somewhere. High level discussion, it looks like overall workmanship was good. The wiring board components are generally clean. The solder junctions were formed, no cracks, no evidence of delamination, corrosion, tin whiskers, arcing, thermal damage, et cetera on it. Then it goes into anomalies on slide five. Five surface mounted devices did not have conformal coating and had evidence they had recently been replaced. Some components were suspected of being counterfeit. More analysis is needed. There is a note again that what looks like it was added after, I'm imagining by the legal team, if counterfeit, then components cannot have met contract specifications. And I also agree with that. We will see later on, they say, these components most likely did not have cause the ejection seat to fail. Like if the component is counterfeit, one, how is it passing the test? And two, if it's counterfeit and not needed, like why is the chip there to begin with? What, what, what does it do? And I don't have those questions, but someone who's smarter than me should, and it's questions I think we should be asking. Slide seven hits the first counterfeit component, which is super thick glasses, uh, a chip that's expected to be, or suspected to be counterfeit, title suspected to be counterfeit components. Jump into slide 10, dual axis accelerometers suspect counterfeit components. It says the original chip that was mounted on the board during the incident was removed by Teledyne after the incident, and a new one was installed. 
So maybe they're doing testing here just in troubleshooting and working down the trouble tree to eliminate what might be a factor here. Hopefully not covering anything up. But it said both of these are suspected of being counterfeit. So they got counterfeit chips in their stockpile as they're going through testing them. Slide 12 gives pictures of what the counterfeit chips look like in different angles. And it's talking about chamfers of the chip, et cetera. Again, you're really getting, getting into the analysis here of these chips. As we move through, it's showing more pictures of various components that are suspected to be counterfeit and examples of why they think they're counterfeit. On slide 14, it does talk about two chips that were counterfeit or suspected of being counterfeit that failed in the mishap specifically. Then we move into a summary from AFRL. The parts in the previous slides are strictly considered suspect at this time. Destructive analysis on these components and analysis of components on other DRS boards would be required to provide higher level confidence in whether they are whether or not they are counterfeit. Thus far, AFRL has not seen evidence that any suspect counterfeit components were causal in the failure of the ACES2 ejection system. Presence of the counterfeit parts in the DRS would not necessarily result in an operational failure of the ACES2 ejection system. Counterfeit components in DOD inventory has been an ongoing problem over the past few decades. Often the manufacturer or supplier is not aware of the components are counterfeit. The DOD is aware of the problem and is working to eliminate these components from supply chain. So a couple questions that popped to my mind with this. One, all right, we have counterfeit or suspect counterfeit components, but essentially we're just saying, yeah, this is just how we do business. And we've obviously had a seat that failed. And now they're saying most likely the components in here that are counterfeit did not result in the ejection seat failure. Well, we know the DRS was bad and that's what caused this seat to fail in the first place. And it has multiple components on it that are counterfeit. So how did this thing pass whatever tester they put it on prior to putting it in the seat? That's my first question because that should have been caught unless the counterfeit components are just working just barely enough and they don't work in extreme environment or extreme scenarios such as an injection. And then two, do we not want to look at this any further and how do they just kind of like, yep, yeah, we have counterfeit components. We know it's a problem in a critical system. That is your lifeline should all else fail. Now flying jets is inherently dangerous, but again, the ejection seat should work. And if components of your lifeline are not working or have suspected counterfeit components, and we've seen recently, you know, supply chain issues in the F-35 with Chinese alloy. Spoiler alert, if you're looking for cobalt that's not owned by China, good luck. They own 80% of the cobalt mines, but I digress. So AFRL did recommend task and they want to do more detailed examination, which again includes destructive analysis, examine for suspect parts. Now this briefing was in August of 2020. The question that was added on the notes, I think again from the legal team was, what were the results of the analysis? The last slide is AFRL is in current possession of the incident DRS unit, again, digital recovery sequencer, Teledyne is requesting return of the DRS for additional test and evaluation. All right, to summarize this, Mezzer did make mistakes. He made mistakes that other pilots have made in landing short. Unfortunately, he needed his ejection seat based on the damage done to the aircraft and his ejection seat didn't work. The fact that this is now coming to light that following the safety investigation board or the accident investigation board, the Air Force Research Laboratory raised questions and has suspect that components inside this digital recovery sequencer, the DRS, that there are counterfeit parts and I ask, where did that stop? Is there more analysis going on? Again, they said it requires destructive analysis. So can you ground your entire fleet and destroy all your DRS units? Probably not. It really requires a harder look, I think, at this. Because if your ejection seat, again, that lifeline that you have when all else goes, goes south, doesn't work, the confidence is completely shot.